Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and Horror Movie Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing Maniac Cop, released in 1988. Maniac Cop stars Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, Lorraine Landon, Robert Zadar, Richard Roundtree, William Smith, Victoria Caitlin, Sherry North, Rocky Giordani, and Nina Arvinson. Maniac Cop was directed by William Lustig. Now, this film is one of those that stars Tom Atkins in a kick-ass role of once again playing Lieutenant Frank McRae. And he takes up a majority of the beginning of this movie. I mean, the, the first good hour of this film is all him. And as usual, he just is so good playing this character. His supporting cast alongside of him with Richard Roundtree playing Commissioner Pike and William Smith playing Captain Ripley, who is now the uh, main man under Commissioner Pike. Um, their, their interactions with each other are pretty damn good, especially the scene in which Richard Roundtree um, asks Tom Atkins. You don't smile very much. <laughs> Priceless. I mean, Tom Atkins is so good at playing a serious role, but doing something in it that is funny, but he doesn't do it intentionally to be funny. Hey, you, what are you oh. doing? Whoa, take it easy, what are you doing? I had to take a leak. You always take a leak with a gun in your hand? It's a good way to blow your balls off. Oh. You got yourself killed back there. Those timbers are ready to break. This place is going to be demolished in a couple of weeks. Yeah, the whole city's going to hell. You can't take a pee anywhere anymore. Throughout this movie, Frank McRae is trying to figure out who is killing people dressed as a cop. After a few murders, he fully starts to believe that the killer is a former police officer who is maybe snapped. Um, of course, Commissioner Pike, Pike, Captain Ripley, dismiss this. They don't believe that. Obviously, someone trying to discredit the police force. I mean, it fits my profile for it not to be a cop. All the same, I think we had to take a look at our own people. He's a cop, maybe even a detective. Buggy. Come on, Ripley, why not? Every detective keeps his old uniform hanging in mothballs. It's the one thing you never get rid of. And you're a cop. Fucking A, I'm a cop. What the fuck are you? Fuck you. And they don't want it getting out to the press. But that does not stop Lieutenant McRae um, from getting in touch with uh, Nina Harvison's Regina Shepard about putting a story about this out, which definitely angers Commissioner Pike. Everybody wants to shoot a cop nowadays has got one hell of an excuse. And then you have Bruce Campbell playing a uh, supporting character as uh, Officer Jack Forrest. And uh, he starts off a very minimal supporting character in this. And uh, after a while, he becomes the red herring that he's the killer. Um, and Lorraine Landon plays his fellow law officer, Officer Teresa Mallory, who he is having an affair with against his wife, Victoria Caitlin's Ellen Forrest. Ellen does not suspect any kind of affair going on. What she suspects is that her husband, Jack, is the killer, just like um, most people end up doing later on in this film. He is the prime suspect in this in these murders. And he kills sequences that this maniac cop commits throughout this film. 
are amazing, kick-ass, um, strong kills. I mean, he is a badass killer in the vein of a Jason Voorhees or a Michael Myers. And of course, by the end of the film, it's revealed that it is not Jack Forrest, which audiences already know this because they know of the affair that is going on. They know that he is not the one that is the killer. But after Ellen Forrest is killed by the maniac cop, Jack Forrest is framed for that murder and he is arrested. Frank doesn't believe it, and by this point in the film, this is where the film goes in a direction that I didn't like. I love this movie. I'm gonna say that right now. But at this moment, I did not like this. Frank is investigating and realizes that um, the maniac cop, Officer Matt Cordell, played by Robert Zadar, has a girlfriend in the police department who is crippled, and her name is Officer Sally Noland, played by Sherry North. And he goes to confront her and talk to her about this and is attacked by the maniac cop and they end up uh, killing Frank in this sequence and have the maniac cop just destroy him in this room and toss him out a fucking window. I just thought it was a complete disservice to how cool this fucking character was to have him get off so easily in such a stupid manner. Um, and then basically from that point on, that's where Bruce Campbell um, earns his major star credit in this film and becomes your main actor in this film and your main hero. And although it is nice to see him playing another hero other than Ash, um, I don't think it was earned. I don't want it at the expense of Tom Atkins getting killed like they did. So um, that really upset me in there. Um, and it's, it's always bothered me about this film. Um, this film has three unique cameos throughout it. It has William Lustig himself, the director, doing a cameo as a motel manager, and then you have his a fellow horror director at the time, now even more prolific as a director, but Sam Raimi played a news reporter in this film. And so this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade continues on schedule, despite speculation that the parade may have been canceled due to fear of violence. And then you have freaking Jake LaMotta, the raging bull himself, the real raging bull, not, not the Robert De Niro version, but this is the real man that that film was based on, and he plays Detective Mata in this. And uh, the, the, those little cameos in here were, were pretty uh, cool. The music in this film is amazing. It is very similar to the style of Harry Manfredini in the Friday the 13th films. Jay Chataway composes the music for this thing and he gives the maniac cop 
a theme song in this that is just so creepy and just so good that it makes this film um if it didn't have Jay Chataway's music in this, I don't think this movie would have gained the cult status that it has now. And I say it has cult status because it wasn't released to the theaters and even given a chance for a theatrical run. It was released in only 50 theaters. And during its runtime, though, even though it was only in 50 theaters, that film earned $671,382 on a $1 million budget. So it almost made its money back in just 50 theaters. Imagine what would happen with this movie if they would have just released it with an average at the time in 1980, released in a release in theaters worldwide of 1,500. Yes, today, you know, movies release in theaters in like 4,000 theaters, but back then, the, the largest was about 2,000. Um, and the normal was around 1,500. So if they would have given this film 1,500 release in theaters, this film would have made its money back and would have been a big earner at the box office. Because it almost made its money back in only 50 freaking theaters. But, um, William Lustig does do a great job directing this thing. The suspense and scenes is really well done. Uh, I, I love the sequence when uh, Lorene Landon as uh, Officer Teresa Mallory is uh, she's suspected of helping Jack Forrest and this officer, uh, Rocky Giordani's uh, Officer Fowley, has her um, handcuffed to him. And he's planning on transferring her um, to lockup and everything. But the maniac cop that Cordell stabs him and kills him and she is forced to drag this dead body with her to get away while being pursued by Cordell. <laughs> Very tense, really cool sequence. Um, really well executed. Um, and then they have the big finale where um, the maniac cop takes a van which police have locked up Jack Forrest in while Teresa Mallory is in pursuit with his squad car. And this whole sequence, it is you know, this is supposed to be a slasher film, but this whole end sequence is like an action uh, movie finale, and it just shows what a cool director William Lustig was, because he made this horror film that has this kick-ass action film finale to it. Um, and uh, it's a very, very well-executed backstory as well for... Um, the Maniac Cop himself, Matt Cordell, and Robert Zadar plays him so well in this. Um, so, I will give Maniac Cop, 1988, I will give this film a 9.2 out of 10. This film might have been a 10 had they not killed off Frank McRae as a character. Tom Atkins was amazing in this while he was on the screen. Um, when they killed him off, even though you had Bruce Campbell to take over for him, it just wasn't the same. And I love Bruce Campbell, but... Tom Atkins was amazing in this when he was on screen. So, what did you think of this movie? Do you agree with my review? Have you seen this movie? Has my review made you want to see this movie? 
let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe, because it really does help this channel out a lot. All right, so that's the end of Horror Movie Night. Once again, thank you for joining me for this, and I hope you will join me tomorrow as we do the Dark Knight Films Night. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.